in an IBF junior middleweight title eliminator, CQ Powell against Terrence Cawthon. That's on tap next at the Hard Rock. Back at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, the Hard Rock Live, the scene getting ready for our main event. A lot of anticipation about this one. Bringing the fighters into the ring, our distinguished ring announcer, Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for our main event of the evening. Making his way to the ring at this time, from the blue corner, Terrence Kalthan. And you get a look at Terrence Kalfin. He's a very determined guy. He thought he got jobbed a little bit in his last fight against Raul Frank. Got headbutted. And the fight was stopped. He ended up on the uh, losing end of that one. And he's in for a big challenge tonight. One of those favorite crossroads fights where he got a couple of talented fighters and a lot at stake as he takes on CQ Powell. Well, you know, this guy is tall, he's rangy. Um, you know, he need to just step around and use his jab and create space and throw a combination. But he got a tall order in front of him tonight. Let's see what he can do. Says he's fit and ready, been working a long time for this fight against CQ Powell. He knows what's at stake. Bob Alexander to bring CQ Powell into the ring. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on his way to the ring from the red corner, Sekou Powell. And Powell bouncing his way out of the dressing room. Fighting out of the red corner tonight. Just one loss on his resume, rather. As he took on a very difficult guy, Kasim Uma. We've seen Uma give guys fits at the top of the game, and that was at a time he was unbeaten. It was one of those fights where he wanted to make a statement, and if he got by Uma, could have catapulted himself right into the title picture. He ends up getting another shot at it as this title eliminator, the winner, will be mandated to fight for the championship of the world in the IBF junior middleweight division. Well, Seiko is very excited about the opportunity to fight tonight for this opportunity. So, you know, he's, 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 he's enjoying himself. You can see that he's very loose. And we're going to see what um what he's bringing to the table tonight. And set for the introductions of our fighters for our main event, scheduled for 12. Here's Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hollywood, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by Seminole Warriors Boxing Promotions and Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. This is your main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing. This is an IBF junior middleweight title elimination bout. Sponsored by the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood, the Seminole Tribe of Florida, and www.gofightlive.tv. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, Marion W. Muhammad, President. Representing the IBF at ringside this evening is the supervisor, Mr. Al Meyer. Representing the Seminole Tribe of Florida is the chairman, Mitchell Cypress. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside are Peter Tremetera, Michael Pernick, and Eugene Grant. When the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, your referee, Teles Asaminos. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at 151 and a half pounds. His professional record, 21 wins, only one loss, with 12 wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, ranked number five in the world by the IBF, here is Sekou Iron Horse Powell. His opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the green trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at 153 and a quarter pounds. In 1996, he captured a bronze medal as a member of the United States boxing team at the Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. As a professional, he has 32 wins, three losses with nine wins by way of knockout. 
He comes from Trenton, New Jersey, ranked number six in the world by the IBF. Here is Terrence, the Heat Captain. 12 rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. Referee Telus Asamillos with the instruction. You have received instructions in the dressing rooms. Obey my commands at all times and protect the soldier at all times. Your belt's looking good. Anything below here is a low blow. Shake hands. God bless. Get a look at the tail of the tape for this one. The IBF Junior Middleweight Title Eliminator. Sick Q Powell coming in at 151 and a half. Has a slight height advantage. Just an inch there. And Powell the younger of the two fighters. Captain's been around for a while. 32 and 3 with nine knockouts. Here we go, our main event of the evening. And it starts out quickly as Powell. And Calvin come rocking out of the corner and exchange haymakers. Terrence Calvin tried to jump on CQ Powell, perhaps after being admonished by Powell. Uh, Powell suggested that he was going to try and run all night, but he's standing right in there and trading. Yeah, well, he came, I thought he was going to surprise CQ Powell, and he ran into something himself. So both guys start out punching on each other, which lead up to the exciting fight. I'm looking forward to this match. Both guys trim and ready. Both have said they're working a long time for this one. They know it's at stake, a chance, a mandate, mandatory chance at the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. That's one of the good things the Alphabet Soup organizations are doing. Every now and then they try to define who is the legitimate challenger and you give the guys a chance to work it out in the ring. You give two guys an opportunity to fight and see who deserving to get a shot at the title. It's, 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 it's the right way to do it. Sekou Powell uh, perhaps mesmerized by the relentless punching style of Kasim Uma. As we mentioned, uh, with Juan Rango in his battle with Ricky Hatton, just didn't really let his hands go. It seemed to be flat in that fight. As if intimidated, he said he learned something from that bout, and he intends to capitalize on those lessons here tonight against Calvin. Well, he's, he's using a good job, and he got, he's stepping in with the job. He's throwing a hook off the jab, and, and, and he's doing a lot of good things. Oh, huge right hand at the captain. It's not going to approach this one could end quickly. Captain is shaking up. He is feeling the heat. From Sekou Powell. Sekou Powell. Comes out blazing here in round number one and lands a Sunday punch. We'll see if Calvin can survive. Just under a minute to go here in the first stanza. Shocker right here in round number one. What does Powell have to do to capitalize? Uh, you would imagine if he could follow that up with any kind of flurry of punches that he could land, he might be able to take Calvin out. He's rocked. Well, go back to the jab. That's what started everything. Go back to the jab and get in position to land, land the combinations. You know, he's looking for the killer. He's looking for the good night punch, but he might get caught. Calvin tags Powell with a couple of shots as he gets his legs back underneath him. Awesome start to this scheduled 12 rounder. Both guys hungry, both guys wanting it, and both guys asserting themselves. 10 seconds to go in round number one, scheduled 12 rounder. Each guy's tasted leather, and Calvin tasted the canvas. Wow. You talk about two guys that can feel it. That was as good a first round as you'll see in this type of situation, Glenn. Good talent. That's good talent right, between both guys. Up in the air. Right. And Sakil Power right. threw the right that's punch that's at the right way. time. So can I listen? Only thing he has is that right hook. Going into okay? the corner. So I want you to do is step over to Sikiu your left. Sakil Power, buddy McGurk. Make him go left. He can't fight going left. Okay? Now listen, when he's charging in, I want you to get, as you touch him with the jab, time him. If he charges in like this, give me a right uppercut, right up the middle. Okay? <laughs> Let's go back to the hand speed now, okay? Yes, As you jab, when he steps over, you step over and cut there him off. There using okay. the jab. Boom. Nice little short chopping punches on the inside. Boom. And you can see it from a different angle. Here you see it again. You turn him. And he's sitting on the seat of his pants. Round number two. It'll be hard to top that. Opening frame here as we come to you from the Hard Rock Live. 
in Hollywood, Florida. Jeff DeForest, the road warrior, Glenn Johnson. Great stuff out of both fighters in round number one. Calvin tries to step up the tempo now. Neither man backing down. And the great thing about boxing, you're on offense and defense at the same time. It's the one sport where you'll find that. And Terrence Carlton learning that lesson the hard way as he went to the canvas for the first knockdown of the fight. Rebounded nicely from that though. He got himself back together and obviously has trained well for this fight. Had to have incredible stamina to recover from that knockdown that quickly. Yeah, and he's a he's a smart fighter. I mean, you know, he played possum for a great part of that and, and, and thought he would be able to catch Kip and he caught him right there. Huge punches here. Good combination <laughs> between these guys. He is winging shots from all angles and he's landing them. Did you Powell now have an answer back? He's got a puzzle in front of him. Backs up against the ropes and the action slows for one of the first times in the first four minutes of this fight. Action Both guys sit down on their punches right here in the corner. Right. Wicked right. body shots is shearing between the two guys. These guys weren't making it up. They went through a vital transformation when the bell rang for round number one. Two real gentlemen, two nice guys, great sportsmen, great respect for each other. But once they got into the ring, Pair of animals in there, and uh, both guys showing tremendous skills and determination. Well, you know, he, he, Terrence was down, and he's, right now he's trying to come back to capture, see if he could get a knockdown or take control of the second round. And he's trying to show that here, and he's sneaking some good punches there, right there. Another he's sneaking right it in. Terrence Powell. Good work from both sides. C.Q. Powell trading like there's no tomorrow in the center of the ring. This is quality boxing. Shots and answering back is Terrence Powell now Good comes body on. shot, uppercut. Huge exchange, both men. Back and forth. Giving it everything they have. This now, is not for the faint of heart, these first couple of rounds, Glenn Johnson. Now, do you believe you will hear any boos after these rounds? I don't think so. I mean, most people will be speechless after these couple of rounds. Good stuff from both guys. Hard to differentiate who's got the better of it here in round number two. You'd have to give a slight edge so far to Calvin. But Powell has 30 seconds left to make a statement. Inside 20 seconds to go round number two. Fight a lot of people thought was going to go the distance so far. Both guys trying to make short work of it. Inside 10 seconds to go. And we'll go to the third round with a beauty on our hands. We need a little bit more of that. You got a right. corner, he's got a free so hand on the inside. You got to let it go. So right. in the second round, right. he's down on the this canvas. This guy don't want to work. Get up in the rest of the Come on, man. We're the action here in the second round. Right. Right. Don't let me get started. Here, here you can fight. see Terrence setting up. He go to the body, come back left hook. And here, he kind of looked like he was going to hold right here. Walk to the corner. And he came out of that series with a wicked hook. That rock the jaw of Secure Power. Good Go stuff. Good stuff. You got a better jab than him, Shakur. You're not using it. You don't have every that chance you get. Let's go, dog. We have a war going on for the IBF Junior Middleweight Elimination Honors. They go with the victor in this fight. Let's go. Know, there's some low blows and uh, some mini blows. Let's go. Let that go. Probably been more of an admonition call for there. The Coffin all over CQ Powell once again. Powell having to battle off the ropes. The pressure being applied by Terrence Coffin. It's easy to keep up this lightning pace, Glenn Johnson. Yeah, I, I, I believe um, Terrence have a better chance if he separates himself a little bit. He's the taller man, he's the bigger man in the ring, but he's getting a little bit too close. And he's giving Secure Powell a chance to throw a combination as well. See, right there, he jumped in with a hook. But if he if he throw that hook and stay outside, he would be able to put the left hand behind it. Again, uh, Punch is looking a little borderline there from Terrence Calvin. As the Minios looking in. Once the fighters to work their way out of it. <laughs> They're talking to each other. Well, that's a great fight so far. 
CQ Powell, does he have the answers right now for? Well, CQ got to go back to his jam. You know, there's a reason why Terrence want to fight on the inside. And he need, if a guy want to fight on the inside, you make him fight from the outside to see, if, find out the reason why he want to fight on the inside. And maybe you can realize his reflex is not as good or, or something about him why he don't like the outside. And wicked body shot. Right right shot from Compton, that right hand is extremely dangerous. He's landing it both low to the midsection and upstairs. Beautiful combination punching by Terrence Compton. And it's not as if Powell isn't in this fight. Doing some good work himself. He comes back now. Compton pouring it on. Unable to budge CQ Powell, but he holds on. Not necessarily for dear life, but you can't blame him for needing a breather in this action. No, definitely you can't blame any any one of these guys to hold for, for a second or two. But Sakil need to go back to his jab, separate himself from, from Terrence. Terrence is, is fighting the inside fight. He's laying on him, and he's pushing him. And he would throw one or two punch and get inside. And... Sekiro just need to separate, throw some punches from the outside. They both men. And Powell may have the better of it. He says, bring it on. The right he, hand got home by CQ Powell at the home. tail end of that flurry. But, but right here, you can't hold, let him hold him for so long. You need to push the guy off, get separation, and go back to work. Great stuff for three rounds. You won't see a pace like this very often. Inside, 10 seconds to go now in round number three. Don't go anywhere. This one is a thing of beauty. Great stuff. Go back in the coffin's corner. And that could have been the coffin corner early in this fight as he went down the ball of flames. A huge knockdown by CQ Valley. Yeah, there you go. Let's let and, uh, I gave Terrence Coffin the last couple of rounds. I thought he had the advantage in the second round. It was a close round. And did the better of the two guys in round number three. So, so you are putting them together, but you got to do it more often. You Here you're going to see some cropping quality work. He threw the hook there. He lay on the inside. He threw the hook again and another hook. And he just throwing hooks inside, short punches. And there he stepped out. And that's why he don't want the distance. Because as soon as he had some distance, he got hit flush. So he's fighting the inside fight, smart fight on his part. Round number four, scheduled for 12. I don't think anybody's leaving the arena right now, Glenn Johnson. This one very much up for grabs. And it's been a sweet pace, a great example of the sweet science with a little bit of a war element in it also. CQ Powell in a black trunks, red trim. He's only got one loss. He's used to having punches rain on him. Face Kasim Uma in his only loss. Bounce back from that. And is looking to put himself into the title picture here in this mandatory IBF junior middleweight title eliminator. Terrence Coffin been around a long time, been around this game. He knows that the politics can sting as much as the punches. He wants to stake claim to that right to fight for the title. And he's making a good opening statement here early on. Well, he's fighting his fight. He's where he wants to be. You know, he, he wants to be on the inside, and that's where he is. Sakyo so Paul needs to separate himself and get to the distance where he can use. He have a beautiful jab, Sakyo will do when he's using it. Right now, he's not using it at all. Terrence taking that away from him, and it's like a lost case. He gets to use it maybe once or twice before Terrence get on the inside, and there go the jab. It's everything else but a jab. Both guys went ballistic in the early stages of this fight. We'll see if it settles into more of a tactical affair as the fight progresses. Although there's little evidence of that right now, Glenn. Each man looking for that vantage point so uh, they can win some punches. Both guys more than willing to trade. Yes, they, they, they are trading some good shots. Both of these guys landing tremendous punch. But I honestly think Terrence is giving the better work. He's getting the best of it. This suits his type of fight. I think you Powell there. Actually, Powell just shrugs it off as Terrence Coffin was leaning on him, applying a lot of pressure with his shoulders. And Powell starts to fire back now in, in retaliation. But Coffin is relentless. An endless barrage of punches coming from both men. Coffin continues to get a little bit of the better of it. This what is a story they're right here. This is where um, Secure Powell 
is, is doing, he's doing everything right, but he allows... Whoa! Oh, oh, right big big shot. Shot. Great those punches! Those for the second time in this fight, and he is shaken up. He is rubbing like that it's over! It's over, Glenn Johnson. What a performance by both men. Terrific stuff. You won't see a better three and a half rounds of boxing. Hagler Hearns right here in front of us. Just great, great stuff. And CQ Pro is on his way to a title shot. Beautiful work. CQ Pro is very excited. He didn't fight exactly how he would want to fight, but he got the result that he wanted. Wow, that could have gone either way at any time. That was one of the great fights you'll ever see. Terrific stuff. That's one of those fights that should be an instant classic. I was thinking if the punch stack guys were here, they'd get carpal tunnel trying to keep up with the pace. Both guys trading, both guys throwing bombs. And finally, CQ Powell lands the telling blow. You see the look on Buddy McGirt's face. He knows he just witnessed an epic here. That is one of the best fights of the year that we saw right here at the Hard Rock Live. Just terrific stuff, Glenn Johnson. Uh, it looked like you and Tarver going at it there for a while. <laughs> we went at it a little differently, of course. But this is great stuff. Um, Secure Powell, he showed he wasn't rattled. He got some, Terrence hit him with some nice punches. He was not rattled, and he came back and closed the show. Here's a look at how the fight ended. And you couldn't help but be out of breath just watching these two guys go at it. What a battle. Right there, you got a little bit of distance. And this is the reason why he didn't want any distance. You see, as soon as some distance was created, he was able to land those beautiful punches. That's why Terrence was fighting so close. Here you see it again. Boom. He throw that jab right hand. He got the inside work. And now he was able to create some space and land that hook. And it was good night. Another, an, another look, different angle. Boom, right there, and his legs start wobbling immediately, and down he goes. Beautiful work. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hollywood, referee Telus Asaminos calls a halt to this bout at 2 minutes 19 seconds of round number 4. Your winner by knockout, now ranked number 1 in the world by the IBF, Sekou Iron Horse Pound.